Before I begin, I'd like to greet each and everyone a Happy New Year. Now, during the course of the video, you might hear some faint popping noises in the background. That's because it's around 11 in the evening here in my place and people are uh, working on their fireworks already, of course, in expectation of the new year. So yeah, um, by the time this video is posted, it would be January the 1st of 2021. And yeah, um, Happy New Year guys! This has been quite a year for all of us, or 2020 has been quite a year for all of us. And let's just look forward to new possibilities next year. So now, on with the topic, we have another inbox review of yet another Sherman. This time it's Dragon's M4 Sherman Composite Hull from the Pacific Theater of War. Now as always, we'd be taking a look at the parts and going through the sprues one by one. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we have uh, the biggest sprues first, and even the longest ones actually. Um, let's start with this. We have here parts for the engine deck, the engine grills, as well as the um, attachment points for the idler wheels. Coming around here we see the gun travel lock, the lifting hooks there, a lot of fuel caps, and just along the line we have pioneer tools, headlight guards, and more attachment points for the suspension. We also have here the loaders, the, uh, sorry, the driver and radio operator hatches. Next we have, if I'm not mistaken, these would be more attachment points for the VBSS. We have here periscope um, guards. Here's the transmission housing bolt case uh, bolting, and then the like rack found at the rear of the hull, and then also back panels or rear panels for the hull. Next, we have two identical sprues here, which contain uh, the majority of the suspension and the running gear. So we have here the pressed steel road wheels. VPS suspension and then the arms and the um, springs over there also I have here the drive sprockets which seem like individual assemblies and they are the spoke version not much to go around with this as it is the same and in true dragon fashion, they have a lot of details going on. Uh, forgot to mention that these would be the mounting points for the VPSS. And if you can see over here, if you can see over here, you have what I presume to be um, bolts. My previous video for the Academy, they also had this um, detail on their sprue. Which I forgot to mention since I overlooked it. But anyhow, yeah, they have these um, details which um, if you're patient enough to remove them and attach them to the wheels, it would add a bit more detail. But overall, these are the screws for the first. Next here, we have the lower hull. It's just a one-piece stub here. And as you saw earlier, mounting points for the VBSS were those um, near rectangular shapes which go in there. Nothing much to go about this hull piece. And then we have here clear parts for the periscopes, the headlights, and whatnot. If I'm not mistaken, these go for the commander, commander Scopola. Yeah, that's it. 
Now coming around, we have um, we have the first option for the turret. Now, technically, they offer the same turrets or basically the same turret types. They have the um, tank commander's hatch, the loader's hatch, and then also the pistol port right there. But for this one, and they also have the option for the low bustle rack and also the high bustle rack, which I'd get to later on. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> ah. As you can see, we have the one piece gun barrel which would require very minimal cleaning as compared to uh, two piece gun barrels and then the parts for the cupola ring the cupola hatches and then the gun mantlets the pistol port door and of course a lot of um, handles and also parts for the addition uh, for the periscopes that come along. Of course, there are a lot of options here. Uh, next, we have a different version for the suspension. These are the spoke type of road wheels. So again, uh, just like what I said with my last video, if you're doing a particular Sherman, better have reference photos for them. So that's it for this set of sprues. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, kit also offers the high bustle rack. So this is basically it. Um, just minimal difference around the rear and how it connects to this part, which is basically the low or high bustle option. And then again, um, parts for the cupola, the cupola. Uh, the ring, the hatches, periscope guards, periscope mounting points. Then you also have here the different version. Um, this one would be for the one piece tank commander's hatch. And this one would be the split type patch. So you would have to look at what kind you're building. And then this would be the um, securing point for the mantlet. And it's basically just the same features from the previous sprue. Next off, we have here additional parts. Um, you can see here the engine deck options, the, uh, one of the covers for the engine deck. And these are what I assume to be, and if my hunch is correct, these would be, <coughs> excuse me. These would be armor plates or add on armor plates which went on to the sides of the um, tank. Pretty similar to what Tamiya did with their M4 Sherman kits. And of course, another mantlet option. Here we have more options, especially for the rear of the tank. Here we have two versions of the rear panel as well as another. Surprisingly, another gun barrel, one piece. And then the air cleaner filters, the exhaust. And here are the door options for this open type um, hatch. Some handles and other parts that go along the rear of the tank. So that's it for this one. Lastly, we have the upper hull. And also the transmission cover, the uh, mud guards at up front, and also where the jibe sprockets are. Also have here the housing bolts. As you can see, this um, this Sherman differs from all the other Shermans because of its um, rounded shape. So if you all know, uh, usually Shermans would have the angled one, so. It comes around there and then sharply has a slope but for the composite hull it has a more rounded um, look to it especially up the front so that's one way to distinguish um, which Sherman you're looking at just looking at um, how it is 
Oh yes, I would like to mention that um, there are very good surface details there. The cast texture, also the welds. Very good on the part of Dragon. Next we have here the decal, the decal sheets, metal wire, and also the photo etched fret. And as you can see, there are a ton of photo etch parts, but from what I heard, not all of them would be used for this particular kit. So again, just check your op uh, reference photos. And uh, let's try to open this, shall we? Okay. Now here's something I'd like to mention about this kit. <coughs> Excuse me. The decals here are mostly for uh, units that serve in the Philippines, the Philippine Islands, during the liberation uh, campaign, uh, basically in Luzon. Now, from what I've read, the decals for the kit are incorrect. The parts are correct, but the decal options are incorrect. Except for one, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's Bushmaster. But most other ones, they use the um, tank commander's hatch that is without the loaders. Tank commanders... Oh, goodness, sorry. Uh, let's repeat that. They use the turret without the loader's hatch and the pistol port. Uh, for reference, this one. I got a um, spare Tamiya kit, the Tamiya M4, which had the exact turret that needs to be used without the loader's hatch. Basically, same features, periscope sear, then this round part here, the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the round part here, and the bustle. Unfortunately enough, the pistol port for Tamiya has a small indentation where you have to put it so it was just easy to fill it in with some putty so this is what I'd be using for the build instead of the ones given by Dragon but I will still make use of Dragon's turret and probably slap it on the Tamiya kit so as I was saying um, most of the units here served in the Philippines and that's what I plan to do uh, make one of the tanks that was well known for liberating one of the largest internment camps in the Philippines which was uh, the University of Santo Tomas that was a university which was made into an internment camp by the Japanese when they captured the Philippines so yeah that's it for these additional parts as I said the PE fret uh, metal wire for first the tow cable and then the decal sheets. <coughs> Excuse me. Next we have Dragon's infamous DS tracks. Fortunately, these are still good. They did not crumble or go stiff. So they are usable. And lastly we have Dragon's very um so love hate relationship with their manuals. They have the illustration up front, and then as you can see, all the sprues are there. And those parts that you wouldn't really be using are all marked in blue. So come around, and you see this one. Um, pretty simple at first. A lot of um, detailing for how you build up the suspension. Doesn't seem too complicated. But once you open the instructions... That's when everything just um, gets cluttered. I know Dragon kind of um, changed up some of their manuals over the years. But honestly, this looks very cluttered. Although somewhat still easy to understand. But of course, it would be better if it's it has... Um, proper spacing in between parts and assembly 
So here are <coughs> excuse me, those units that served in the Philippines. We have here the Southern Cross from the 41st Tank Battalion. Bushmaster from the 763rd Tank Battalion, 96th Infantry Division. Uh, Company B of the 44th Tank Battalion, U.S. Army. And another Company B of the 44th Tank Battalion, again, U.S. Army. So these two um, were the ones that liberated, or part of the unit that liberated University of Santo Tomas during the Battle for Manila, which was in 1945. And then the others are, of course, units, or tank units that served elsewhere in the Philippines in Luzon. So yeah, that's basically it for this kit. Um, not much to go about it, except that reviews say it's a good kit, but you just really have to look out for the, de the decals, and you need to use your reference photos. But other than that, it looks like a straightforward kit, which would be relatively easy to do. And you could probably hear somewhere in the background, um, fireworks are starting to pick up. Time check here in my place would be, hold on, 30 minutes to midnight. That means it's almost 20 or 21, everybody. So yeah, um, that's all I have for today. Oh yeah, before I forget, the... Academy M4A382 has temporarily been suspended. I messed up one of the decals. So right now I'm still looking for a replacement. Hopefully Academy does provide a replacement or if not I would have to ask some of my friends for a spare. Well anyhow, uh, that's it for today. That's it for this year. Wow. Uh, never thought I'd and it, yeah, didn't imagine I'd be saying that, but yeah, th that's it for this year. Uh, I'll see you guys in January of 2021. So yeah, stay safe, enjoy your new year, have fun, have safe fun, and as always, keep building, and have a happy new year. Till next time, goodbye.